Hi everyone, welcome to Sigma Maths. We're going to have a look at the trig graphs in this video and as you can see from the GCSE specification in front of you, you are expected to recognise, sketch and interpret the graphs of sin x, cos x and tan x. This specification reference is from the Edexcel specification but it is very similar across all of the exam boards. Now to begin your sketch I suggest that you plot some of the most important points. For sin x we have that it takes the value of 0 when x is 0, 180 and 360. The sine graph can only take values between, or the sine function sorry, can only take values between 1 and negative 1. It reaches its maximum the for the first time at 90 degrees. We have a point here. It reaches its minimum of negative 1 for the first time at 270 degrees. We have a point about here. Now, because we've plotted our uh, most important points, we now have the rough outline of the sine graph, which will really help us get our sketch right. One of the problems that I've seen with students when they're sketching the sine graph is they know how to start and they get the very first part of the curve um, usually perfectly fine but then in terms of the spacing of the latter part of the curve they tend to go a little bit wrong um, and that's when they don't have these points laid out for them as kind of a guide so I, I strongly recommend that you just lightly mark these points down just to give yourself something to follow. So we start from 0, 0 and we're going to go up to 91. Oh, sorry. That's not particularly good. There we go. Up to 91. Down for 180. And then back up to 360. So we've got this nice wave shape with the sine graph. And we're going to take it back through the negatives as well so you can see a bit more of it. So negative 90 goes down to negative 1. Then 0 at 180. 1 at negative 270. And back down to 0 at negative 360. So the curve continues in with its wave shape. Up through there. There we go. Okay, so the sine graph is what we call periodic. That means that there's a section of the graph that goes between 0 and 360, so this wave right here, that we can take that part of the graph and just repeat it over and over again to produce the rest of the graph. I mean, you can see here from negative 360 to 0, this part of the graph is literally a repeat of the 0 to 360 um, part of the graph that we drew here. So we can say it's periodic, and we can say that it has a period of 360 degrees. That just tells us how wide the period is for the repeating unit of the graph. Now for the cos graph, it's very closely related to the sine graph, and you'll see why in a minute. We're still going to need our 1 and negative 1 labels on the y-axis, because cos also can only take values between 1 and negative 1. This time, the cos graph is 0 at 90 and 270. It takes a value of 1 when x is 0, and negative 1 when x is 180. It then goes back up to 1 at 360. It has the same shape as the sine graph, so this wave shape. And if we start here at 0, 1, we go down through 90, back up through 270 to 360. And then if we go through the negatives as well, we're going to go back down through minus 90. We're going to hit negative 1 at negative 180. Back up through negative 270. And then back to basically where we started. 1 again at negative 360. So let's just fill that in. And then we go down to 180. And up to 360. Okay, so you can see that it's very similar to the sine graph. And if you look closely you can see that if we picked up the sine graph and we move the whole thing back by 90 degrees, so this point here would move back to sit on the y-axis, then we would have the cos graph. OK, 
Okay, so they are a translation of 90 degrees um, between each other. That, that's all there is. This is also periodic in that case, seeing as it's exactly the same graph but just moved. Periodic with a period of 360 degrees. Still has the maximum of 1, minimum of minus 1. Let's just make a note of that here. Max 1, then negative 1. And it too has a repeating unit between 0 and 360. And let's see this kind of uh, valley shape that just gets, keeps getting repeated over and over again. Okay, now the tan graph is quite a bit different to the other two. And in fact, I want to look at a relationship between sine and cos to help us understand why the tan graph looks the way that it does. So this up here is the identity that I want, or the, yeah, it is an identity. You don't need to worry at the moment what, about what an identity is, but it basically means that the two sides of the equation are equivalent. Tan x is equivalent to sine x over cos x. Now, if this is not something you've seen before, sine x is opposite over the hypotenuse, cos x is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan x is opposite over adjacent. If we were to rearrange the sine x equation to make the opposite, O, the subject, then we would have O equals H sine x. If we rearrange the cos graph to make A the subject, we would get H cos x. And the reason I've done that is because I now have an expression for O and A that I can substitute in to tan. So this now means that tan x now, if I replace the O with the equation from the beginning here, so this is just Sokotoa. So if I grab the uh, H sine X that is equivalent to O here, so H sine X, and then adjacent A, we've rearranged this equation to get H cos X to go in place of A. And then because we have a fraction here, a division, we can simply cancel the two h's, and we get the identity um, that I have already mentioned. Now, the reason this identity, let's go back to where we were, is useful to us is because to get going on the tan graph, we can have a look at what's happening on the sine and the cos graph. Now, to think about when tan is zero, looking at the formula, we just need to know when sine is zero. It doesn't matter what value cos takes, but if the numerator of a fraction is zero, then the overall value will be zero as well. So sine x was zero at zero, 180, and 360. So tan will also be zero in exactly the same places as the sine graph. So I'm just gonna pop those in for this whole range. We're definitely gonna be passing through these points. Now, it would also be worth thinking about when cos is zero. Now, an interesting thing happens when cos is zero, because if you look back up at the formula, if we imagine replacing the cos x with zero, then we know that we arrive at a problem. We cannot divide by zero. That means that there cannot be any points on the tan graph at the values of 90 and 270, because at these points, cos is zero. So what happens there then is we have these things called asymptotes. Let's just have these come in now, there we go. So these lines basically say there is no point on this line, this line's infinitely long, at when x is 90 that lies on the tan graph. What happens instead is the tan graph gets closer and closer and closer to this line but never gets to touch it. So once you've learned the shape of the tan graph, the hardest thing to remember is where to put the shape of it, where will the important things go. And that's why using this identity helps us to put things in the right place when we sketch the tan graph. If we've learnt the sine graph and the cos graph really well, so well that we can just picture them in our heads, or just do a quick sketch, then we can straight away mark on when tan is zero and where the asymptotes go. So tan is zero and sine is zero, asymptotes go where cos is zero. Now we can just draw in the tan graph. So starting at zero, zero, the tan graph just comes up and tends 
Oh, that's really not very good. Try that again. Time graph comes up and tends to the asymptote. It's almost like then it goes off to infinity so far that it reaches back around to negative infinity. And it's like we're coming back up the asymptote on the other side. And we come up to 180. And then we continue on and do the same thing again. And then we come up from the other side of the asymptote to 360. And we continue this on into the negatives. So we're going to come down to meet the asymptote. And then over to the other side of the asymptote down to 180. And back down again. And then finally one more. So you can see again, tan is periodic, much like sine and cos. But this time, you have a slightly different period. So again, just a reminder, period is just how wide, or for how many x values, the repeating unit is for. So for sine and cos, it was 360, because that's how far you'd have to travel to complete a whole wave from start to end. For the tan graph, actually, the repeating unit is a bit smaller. So it's just this bit here. So you can either take it from one asymptote to another, or you can take it from a zero point to another zero point. Either way, you get a section of the graph that you could just repeat over and over again to get the rest of the graph. So this time, the period is only 180 degrees. Okay, so there's the three trig graphs. We've uh, had a look at all of the important points that you get. And we've also mentioned that it's valuable to sketch, to, sorry, put those important points down first before you draw the curve. We've also learned that this formula is it's not actually a requirement on the GCSE for you to know this formula, but it is really useful, particularly for sketching the tan graph. So that formula tells us that tan is zero where sine is zero, and that we have asymptotes where cos is zero. Okay, we're going to be looking at the transformations of trig graphs in another video, so look out for that. And we'll also be looking at some of the exact values that you are expected to know for the non-calculator paper in uh, other videos as well. So thank you for watching. Uh, please like the video if you found it useful, and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.